that there's kind of like a trend to the TV shows and movies that I talk about. You know, I mean, like, if there's an averagely boring teenage girl falling in love with, like, a half vampire, half Teletubby or whatever, like, you better believe I'm there day one. But every now and then, I like to change things up and talk about something a little bit different. So this week, I thought I'd check out a show that a lot of people have been requesting, and since it just ended, like, a month ago, what better time than now to talk about that hit CW show, iZombie. Which, by the way, turns out is not a gritty reboot of iCarly, so... But let's take a walk. So right from the beginning, we meet our main character, Liv, short for Olivia, a medical resident who's not afraid to break the rules and do things her own way. You know, just like every other doctor on TV since ever. But gosh darn it, you know, people just can't get enough of her. Tell Dr. Jeffries we're good here. Liv. It's so weird. You have all the makings of a nemesis, but I actually kind of like you. You know, that reminds me of back when I used to have a real job. There was kind of this, like, rivalry going on between me and this other guy. I was always like, one day I'll show everyone who's the best at whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing right now. I don't know, it's my first day. But then guess what happened? I found out he didn't even know I existed, so what am I supposed to do with all this stuff now? Anyway, so then Liv gets invited to a party, but she turns it down because, I mean, <laughs> who has time for a party when you have a little rendezvous with everyone's favorite superhero? Perfect chin and jawline man! Oh, so you're not gonna believe this. That girl Marcy, who I thought wanted to kill me, she invited me to a party. Wow. So she's embracing your overall perfection rather than trying to destroy you. Well played, Marcy the rival. It's on a boat or something. Tonight? You should go. What's the worst that can happen? Uh, but like, what if there's rock and roll music or like girls with their shoulders exposed? <gasps> But she ends up going anyway, and much like any other party, I assume, because, I mean, I never got invited, but, but hey, happy birthday anyway, Jenna. Zombies show up and eat everybody, so joke's on you, cool kids. The worst that can happen? Try an inexplicable zombie outbreak. <laughs> Followed by a sudden desire to eat brains. <laughs> and so here's where the story actually gets going. Liv is now a zombie, and she... <laughs> Oh, oh, I just got it. Her, her name is Liv, and she's a zombie. <laughs> so here's where she's at right now. Due to her sudden new fascination with eating brains, which, like, I mean, who hasn't been there before? You know what I'm saying? She quits her job and starts working at a morgue. She also breaks up with the guy with the chin, and she's always kind of worried that because she's so pale and has these, like, heavy dark circles under her eyes all the time, she's gonna freak people out. But I gotta say, as someone who spends, like, 13 hours a day making YouTube videos, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. Anyway, so basically, she's a completely different person now. She doesn't really care about anything or anyone, and she just, like, lives life as a zombie. Or not, as the case may be. And of course, of course, now people are starting to notice. We're a little concerned? Very concerned, honey. You traded a top-notch residency at the hospital for a job at the morgue. You will regret breaking off your engagement till the end of time. Do you have any idea how many women would kill to be with a man like this? Uh, are we talking about any woman in particular, Mom? Or like, cause I mean, I'm, I'm getting kind of a weird vibe here. Anyway, so like I said earlier, Liv works at the morgue so she can eat brains, as one does. And then one day, while eating said brains, her coworker figures out that just maybe Liv might not be totally normal. <laughs> I have so many questions. First, why the hot sauce? Is that a zombie thing? Now here's where the big twist comes into the show. So Liv eats the brains from this Jane Doe cadaver. After this, a police detective comes in asking if they've been able to identify the body. And that's when Liv gets this weird kind of like flashback of one of the girl's memories, which leads them to figure out who she might be. I'm arresting you for shoplifting. You have the right to retain counsel without delay. Duty counsel. Shoplifting in Canada. She was arrested for shoplifting in Vancouver in 2008. Yeah, so the main shtick is that whenever Liv eats someone's brain, she gets some of their memories as well. So as the show goes on, Liv keeps getting these visions about the girl, one of which is about her and the local weatherman. KSTW News. Johnny Frost with up to... But it turns out this girl was actually something called an escort, and she and the weatherman were doing something called a role play? Which I certainly don't know what that means. <laughs> you know, I, I just spend every night reading the Bible, okay, mom? Now, one thing leads to another, and they end up at Tatiana's apartment. Tatiana is the name of the girl, by the way. Not really important, but whatever. And suddenly, things are starting to make a lot more sense. Here's her phone. Hey, you little klepto. Get your back up to the suite, or we are never going to work with you again. We? So there was another girl there that night. 
Sounds like Tatiana stole something. So right after this, Liv gets a vision of how exactly Tatiana died, and suddenly, her attitude of like, Psh, yeah, who cares, whatever, life's pointless, Taylor Swift's overrated, is gone, and she's ready to save the day and stuff. But just as they're about to crack the case, the police chief mysteriously decides to give it to some random other guy. Pratt here has a CI who's got a lead on the dead girl. He's gonna run the case from here on out. But I'm so close, sir. The killer was one of Tatiana's Johns. The John's ring was stolen, and he killed her trying to get it back, only she didn't have it. I've got an IP address. Well, maybe Pratt will let you tag along. But there's just something a little suspicious about all this, so our main characters follow this new guy, and that's when we all find out what's really been going on. Wanna get any closer in case he hears us? Stay here. What else am I gonna do? My wife is like Satan. If she comes home from Boca and I don't have my wedding ring, that's right, the bad guy was this other police detective that we only just kind of sort of met like five minutes ago, so boy, what a crazy twist that was, huh guys? Anyway, so the bad guy escapes and Liv tries to stop him, but there's a scuffle and he drives away. Except, turns out Liv is some kind of super zombie and does a bunch of cool super zombie stuff. You know, fun fact, that's exactly the same face I made when I heard the news about Disney Plus. Hey, we got a live action Lady in the Tramp. Uh huh. We're gonna have a series all about Boba Tea. Yeah, okay, whatever. Okay, okay. Uh, we got a Lizzie McGuire reboot. Say what now? H High School Musical series? <laughs> And so in the end, Liv saves the day, and now she's a crime-fighting psychic zombie girl, which also just so happens to be one of my old OkCupid search filters, but that's neither here nor there. I've spent five months bemoaning all that was taken from me. It never occurred to me that I'd have something to give, a way to contribute, a reason for being not alive. And then the show goes on for five seasons. But I gotta say, as weird as the show is, I like how it's fully aware of its ridiculousness. Like, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, Lucifer or Jane the Virgin, maybe. Just in that everyone knows how dumb it is, and so they don't really take themselves too seriously. Until they do, and then that kind of ruins all the fun, but whatever. Also, turns out it's from the same guy who made Veronica Mars, so there's that too, I guess. But yeah, overall, I can see the appeal of the show. I mean, it's weird, but I get it. Speaking of psychic zombies, this video was brought to you by Dashlane. If you're like me, in which case, <laughs> that's rough, you probably find yourself using the same password over and over again for different things, right? But of course, if one password gets hacked, then suddenly they could access all your information. You know, kind of like if Liv ate your brain, although then you'd probably have bigger problems, but whatever. Before you know it, all your personal information has been stolen, and someone's using your credit card to buy 150 copies of Barbie's Horse Adventures Wild Horse Rescue on PS2. Being someone who uses the internet for pretty much everything, it's invaluable to have that extra level of security that Dashlane can give you. Dashlane is a one-stop shop for your digital identity. It manages all your passwords, personal info, financials, whatever you need, making your life safe and more secure. It works across all devices, including Apple products, PCs, Android, Safari, and Chrome. It also has a secure autofill feature that works for personal information, credit cards, that type of thing. It comes with a VPN to stop people from tracking you, and they even check if your personal information is being sold on the dark web. So to try Dashlane for free for life on your first device, go to dashlane.com slash alexmyers, and you can use my promo code code Alex Myers to get 10% off to use Dashlane on all your devices. So the link is down below and once again thank you Dashlane for sponsoring this video. You know, I find as I watch a lot of these shows, you know, so many teen dramas, so many teen rom-coms, so many supernatural whatevers. The thing that I mentioned at the end of the video with this show, along with like Veronica Mars and Jane the Virgin and Lucifer or whatever, where it's like, you know, you can have these completely ridiculous absurd ideas and if you just have like a little bit of self-awareness to be like yeah this is kind of weird but just come along with us anyway like even just having that little bit of and lack of seriousness i think really can elevate a lot of shows and so when you have a show where someone's a zombie and they have to eat brains and they get memories from the brains like yeah it's ridiculous it's weird but the fact that the show was aware of that makes it much more entertaining because you know you don't have to like try and suspend your disbelief too far because it's like oh everything's super serious now guys people love humor they love to joke around people are sarcastic and make jokes about stuff all the time and so when you have these like tv shows and movies where weird things are happening but everyone's like serious about it it just it makes it even less believable i guess that's why like you know i'm not really much of a superhero person or a comic book person but like but i, I enjoy like the marvel movies for example because for the most part they don't take themselves very seriously at all especially when you get to things like you know thor and 
Ant-Man and things like that. It's like everyone's kind of aware of how weird and ridiculous it is, but that doesn't make it less enjoyable. It just it just means like, yeah, okay, we're, we're mature enough to realize that this is kind of dumb, but let's just have fun anyway. Not that every show should be that way, but I think in general, it would make a lot of shows better. And of course, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Follow me on Twitter. Let me know what's favorite part of the video or what video you want me to do next or just say hello. You know, that's fine too. Follow my dog Charlie on Instagram, Charlie Meets Pumpkin. And above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.